What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and today we're going to have a little bit of fun, a little oddball subject here. The top 10 comics that I find while I'm out on the hunt. Now, I got two jobs other than this channel, guys, so the only hunting I really get to do is on the weekend and sometimes a weeknight. And still, I see these comics probably every single week, at least once. These are the books that were just so common that seemingly everyone was just of the like mind and it didn't really matter which era a collector you were, you grabbed these comics and they're still in your collection. Quick shout out to Floki War for an amazing deal on one of the books you never ever 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 see. First appearance of Nick Fury right there. My man, thanks for the amazing deal. Let's get into the list with number one, a fairly obvious one here. We got Wildcats number one. This I run into pretty much every weekend. It doesn't matter if you were only a Marvel guy. It doesn't matter if you were only a DC guy. For whatever reason, this image title number one is in everybody's collection. It's just one of the most common books you will ever see. Jim Lee cover of Wildcats number one. Right now it's a little bit fairly on the high. Um, believe it or not, a 9.8, despite how common they are, goes for almost a hundred bucks. Recently, I started only picking it up if it's like a dollar, but I don't even do that anymore. Better let someone else have it who's going to enjoy it, frankly, more than me. Green Lantern 48. Now, what's interesting about this book is it's one of my favorite keys, right? It's the first appearance of Kyle Rayner. I'm a huge Green Lantern guy, a huge 90s guy. I love Kyle Rayner. I have submitted this book by my count at least five times. It has got a 9.8 every time. And despite this being an awesome $200 brick, one of my favorite characters, man, do I see this thing a lot. And I'm, uh, at this point, I've gotten so lucky with it I'm on to bigger and better things. You know what I mean? You can only run into something and keep getting 9.8 so long for it to, you wanna give someone else a shot. And that's definitely what happened here. Now this is an interesting book because every time I run into this book, it's really nice shape. It's almost like this particular storyline they marketed very heavily in the 90s. So I think a lot of people got it, but maybe a lot of people didn't read it because a lot of the copies I find look like unread. This is, out of all of these on this list, this is the one I consistently find in the highest highest grade shape. I have my theories, but end of the day, it's a beautiful book, great key. Um, I still think it's a very affordable key, but it is also one I find outlandishly often. This is a book I find so common that I almost find it every like Saturday and Sunday. I almost find this one twice a week. Um, and the funny thing is, is once again, just like a lot of the others on this list, it's a great one to have. Guys, that's the first appearance of Omega Red. I happen to think it's a pretty amazing cover. I really like how it's everybody squared off against him. It makes him seem incredibly imposing in the corner the way he is. I've got so many in my collection, and I, I they're all pretty high grade, you know, 9.8, 9.6, 9.4s, got a lot of them. I got to send them out, and those are ones that weirdly have such a high value that I am going to send them. Some of them I thought I'd just get rid of raw, but um, I guess this is one that when I, when I see it, I still pick it up pretty much every time. Um, I think a 9.8. It was 300 bucks. I think it's cooled down a bit now, but I don't really see it ever really going below 200 bucks, which is funny because this run had such a high print count. You can find them all over the place, and you can usually find them for like 20, maybe 30 bucks. Great book to use as practice when submitting to CGC. Those flaws can't hide on that red. Next up, and this is a weird one. I see this comic, Amazing Spider-Man 363, every single week. Why? It's the third Carnage cover appearance. It's the third full appearance of Carnage. Not really a key. And if you look at the CGC census, it is in, I believe, the top 50 of books that get submitted in. It is a fantastic cover, Mark Bagley cover. And I think everybody wanted to get their hands on some Carnage goodness. This is the poor man's Carnage key. Although, 
Is it really a key? Not so much. I see this all the time. At one point I had a short box that was either a third or like half full of just this book. Next up, oh, I didn't bring this with me. We have Spider-Man number one. And I'm talking any of the variants. Obviously the main cover is pretty common, but I run into the silver cover probably once a weekend too. It's just a very, very common book. They printed a lot of them at the time. Some of the other rare variants, <laughs> It's weird to call them rare since it was so highly printed. There are variants that had a lesser print run. Um, I mean, this is a book I see so much. I just saw a platinum the other uh, the other weekend. I didn't even bat an eye. Apparently, a nine eight goes into deep into the thousands, but I just don't care. I I I just don't I just don't care. <laughs> Look, guys, if you hold one, the same comic one thousand times. You can get a little numb to it. That is one I am just, I eat, I, I wouldn't pay a dollar for it. And some of you in the comments are going to get angry and like, that's a $20 book, blah, blah, blah. Okay, buy it. If you like it, buy it. I'm tired of it. Next, Wolverine number one. I'm talking about the 1988 one. First Wolverine as Patch. This is a book that is stupidly common, especially after the success of the miniseries Wolverine. This was a title that everyone wanted and pretty much everybody had on their pull list at the time. You can certainly, if you do enough hunting, you can find some sharp copies of some nicely preserved Wolverine number ones. Two years ago, I sold one for 200 bucks. I was happy to do it after I got a 9.8 of it. I remember thinking, wow, 200 bucks off of that silly, super, super common book. Turns out, in the heat of the pandemic and all the crazy market fluctuation and everything, that book, I think it got close to a thousand dollars. I even there, there were a couple sales that got up there. I actually put it in the video of comics. I can't believe hit a thousand bucks. That is definitely a contender. I still see that almost every week, guys. It is very common. Avid Wolverine fans still go nuts over it. I just I can't I can't comprehend the hype behind that one. As you guys know, I don't submit books that I don't actually like. That's just one of them. Guys, if you ever want to know how you can actually support this channel so I can keep bringing great content to you, there's now a way that you can. If you go ahead through a partnership I have with Dynamic Forces, use the code MINT at checkout. You get 10% off your order and I get a little piece. So Next up is one that regrettably I actually just sold and I definitely regret it, but I'll find it again because it's very common. Killing joke. Yeah, and I, well, any print. But specifically, I do find that first print a lot. I really do. I just ran into another one last weekend. Uh, the guy I'm going to uh, two weeks from now to check out his collection. I already know he's got a couple of them. It's just uh, it's very common. Everybody wanted it because it was such an amazing story that came out. It does have a nice bit of value because it is such an iconic book and such an iconic story. Very common book. Easily a contender for a top 10 most found books. It's definitely one I may find a lot, but I'm not tired of it. You don't get tired of killing joke, I think. At least in my opinion. Next up, this one you probably knew. I might even consider making this one the thumbnail for the video. Maybe this or Spider-Man 1. Lethal Protector number 1. Venom, right, guys? This book and its variants. The variants I definitely find more interesting, um, especially the, um, the error variants. I ran into a black error uh, book a couple weeks ago. I thought that was really cool to hold. But yeah, the red one, just the regular red foil. Yeah, I see that every week. Um, it's still a great book. Like a lot of the ones on this list, a 9.8, goes all the way up to like 200 bucks. Sometimes I think it even goes farther than that, which is funny because I think there's thousands and thousands and thousands on the census. The one thing that book has is just an outstanding image, an outstanding cover. There's a reason everybody wanted it. It was the cool new Venom book. Venom was hotter than hot and the cover was just amazing. It was kind of a, just a no brainer. Next up is going to be the most recent entry on this list, and it's Batman number one. We're talking the new 52 version. Uh, this, this run was very good. 
I am not the biggest New 52 guy, but you can't deny how great the Batman run was. Scott Snyder doing what he does best. I've never liked that cover very much, but it's within the pages of the book is what's for me. I can't get enough of the Court of Owls. Kind of a modern staple in Batman writing was this, uh, these early issues of the Batman New 52. And I don't know if they just heavily marketed it or that everybody just wanted a new Batman number one. The first time a Batman was going to be number one since 1940. And everybody just wanted it, and I was one of them. I had a couple. They're unfortunately all gone. I do have the omnibus. But yeah, Batman number one, I see that a lot. Before we go to our number one, I got a couple honorable mentions, including Turok, obviously. Number one we're talking about with that little uh, foil centering right there. As well as Web of Spider-Man number one and Young Blood number one. Man, I see those a lot. All right, guys, do you know what number one is? You probably have been waiting for it on this list, wondering when it was going to show up. You were right. Of course I'm talking about X-Men number one, the Jim Lee 90s version. I find those books more often than I find sand on a beach. Any of the variants. Uh, I find cover A, I find cover B, I find cover C, I find cover D, I find that wraparound cover every week absolutely i could be checking out someone's golden age collection and x-men number one will be in there oh how'd that get in there i don't know everyone has this in their collection i want you guys to go ahead and hit like if you have any of those in your collection right now it used to be a book that i would find in dollar bins and i would just Sure, I'll, I'll get them for a dollar i'll sell the whole pack of all the variants minus the uh wraparound cover for like 10 bucks but now someone decided that they would be like five or even like ten dollar books some i sometimes i see like 20 30 bucks on some of those variants that aren't even the wraparound and that just makes me laugh because there's a million of those so no i don't even pick them up for 50 cents anymore like i said guys if you hold something five thousand times it loses its shine on you I'm a massive 90s fan and a 90s hunter, first and foremost. I still think it's kind of one of my uh, favorite decades to hunt. But what I like to hunt is the kind of rare oddball stuff or stuff that I enjoyed as a kid or kind of underrated keys or the big boy keys. But these heavily, heavily printed ones, whew, I think I finally just moved on from them. So guys, what'd you think of the list? Funny thing. I pretty much love all these books, usually for the story, some of them for the key notoriety of them. They're great books. They're just so oversaturated that it just, I'm half of them I'm not interested in even picking up anymore. But I want to know what is the number one most common books that you guys find when you're maybe out in a hunt checking out a friend's collection at a con. What books do you see so often it almost makes you want to roll your eyes? Let me know down in the comments. Keep on hunting, even if it's the same book every week.